the main motivation for our paper is to try to take a look at the inner workings of the top executive team at firms and how that is related to their financial performance. And so the main contribution of our paper is to introduce a new measure that is hopefully related to the inner workings in the top executive team, namely the CEO pay slice. The CEO pay slice is the fraction of the total pay to the top five executives at a firm that is captured by the CEO. In our sample, that has data since, 1990, since 1993, uh, with over 2,000 firms, with over 3,000 CEOs, we find that the average CEO pay slice is 35%. This indicates that for a typical firm, the CEO will make about double the salary uh, of, the other of the other top executives. So our main result is that firms that have a high CEO pay slice, so firms where the CEO, CEO makes high compensation relative to, relative to the other top executives at that same firm, that those firms have lower financial value and lower accounting profitability. To get a sense of how large those differences are, we can compare uh, what happens to a firm with a CEO pay slice of the average, 35%, versus a firm that would have a CEO pay slice of 46% or 11% higher which is the standard deviation of, of CEO pay slice in our, in our sample. That difference in CEO pay slice of 11% is associated with a difference in financial value of the firm of 5.5%. So firms with higher CEO pay slice would have a lower value by 5.5%. And accounting profitability, that's about 10% lower than the average. So our main result that um, at firms with high CEO pay slices, uh, the, the firm value is lower and the profitability is lower could be explained by, by two different uh, hypotheses. Those two hypotheses are not mutually exclusive, and so both of them could, could be true for different firms or for the same firm at different times or in different degrees. The first explanation is that the appropriate level of CEO pay slice, which will differ across firms and across circumstances for a given firm, um, can depend on the financial circumstance of the firm. So in particular, uh, it may be appropriate or more appropriate to, to pay the CEO more relative to the other top executives at firms that have a lower financial value or lower profitability. Maybe those firms really need kind of a relatively strong CEO in, in the top team uh, to make certain, uh, certain uh, big decisions. The alternative hypothesis is that uh, at some firms, the CEO may have too much power and too much influence vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the board and so may have been able to get some excess CEO uh, pay. And that could indicate that there may be some, some governance uh, problems at those firms. To get at that question, to distinguish these two hypotheses, we looked at various other aspects of firm behavior and firm outcomes. And we found some very interesting relationships between CEO pay slice and those other firm behaviors. For example, we looked at the stock market reactions around the announcement that the firm is doing an acquisition. So what did the market think of those uh, acquisitions? It turns out that for firms with high CEO pay slices, that the market likes those acquisitions a whole lot less. Those acquisition announcement returns are much more likely to be negative and on average are considerably lower. The second aspect we looked at is the probability that the CEO receives a lucky option grant. Now the lucky option grant means that the CEO happened to get an option grant on that day of the month that had the lowest stock price in that month. So that's related to the recent uh, option backdating scandal. So it's just a proxy to get at the probability that indeed the option grant was, was backdated. And we find that the, uh, the lucky grants are much more likely again at firms where the CEO has a high pay slice. The third aspect we, we considered was to look at the likelihood that the CEO is fired if the firm uh, has a really bad stock market performance. After a big drop in the stock price, stock price um, can the CEO stay on or not? We find that the sensitivity uh, of the CEO staying on after a really bad performance is, is definitely related to CEO pay slice. So for firms where the CEO gets a high pay slice, those CEOs are much more likely to stay on after a relatively bad performance in the stock market. So taken together, we would argue that these results suggest that for, for some firms, indeed, the high CO pay slice could indicate governance problems. So it may be interesting to speculate a, a bit on the considerations a board could have in determining the appropriate level of CO pay slice for their firm. I would propose at least three considerations for the board. First, 
The appropriate level of, of the CEO base lies will depend on the relative importance of the CEO within the top executive team. So who are the other members of the top executive team? Uh, how talented are they? How important are they for, for making the decisions? What is their experience? Um, what are their outside opportunities? What is the chance that if you pay them less, that they uh, may go elsewhere? The second consideration for the board has to do with the tournament incentives. In general, if you climb the corporate ladder, your pay will go up. The question is, but how much should the pay go up? Um, and a higher CEO pay slice may indicate that, that the board thinks that tournament incentives are really important, and the board may want to give strong incentives to the other top executives to, uh, to, to vie for the CEO uh, spot. And so this has to do with succession planning as well. Of course, you may also overdo this. It's possible to, uh, to create too strong an incentive for the senior executives to climb up. Uh, that may lead to resentment. That may lead to less cooperation among senior executives. And it may also lead to senior executives thinking too much about the future rather than doing their job in the here and now. The third consideration uh, for boards um, has to do with what kind of decision making they would like to see in their top executive team. A high CEO pay slice may indicate a more dominant type of decision making where the CEO basically calls the shots. A lower CEO pay slice may indicate a more group-like decision making process where the CEO is really important but not completely dominant. For investors, um, considering the CEO pay slice at a given firm may also be of interest. Uh, for investors particularly who, uh, who are, have a long-term interest in the firm, um, then a high CEO pay slice may indicate governance problems. At the same time, it's not at all clear that high CEO pay slice indicate governance problems at all firms at all times. So some warning signs are firms with a very high CEO pay slice that goes on a buying spree, buys up all kinds of other companies where the market doesn't like. The, uh, those acquisitions with low acquisition announcement returns. Another warning sign is that, this, that the firm has really bad performance with a CEO with a high CEO pay slice, and then the board does not fire uh, the, the CEO. I, I would like to think that one of the main strengths of the CEO pay slice as a new measure for financial economists uh, and people in the real world to, to consider is its simplicity. All we do is we calculate a fraction of the total compensation to the top executive team, the top five, that goes to the CEO. So it's very simple, um, and I think that simplicity is one of its strengths. One of the reasons that I think it's uh, statistically the powerful measure is that there's so many things that go into the top executive pay at a given firm. But by taking the relative pay of the CEO relative to the other top executives, you basically control for everything that affects the average pay of the senior executive at that firm. And so you get much more direct measure of the importance of the CEO relative to the top, top executives.